Hi everyone, this is Maura Sweeney and welcome to the latest episode of Maura Sweeney Living Happy Inside Out. I know again, as I've said several times over the past year or so, it has been a while since I've connected with you. I actually had a few people reach out to me and say, are you still doing podcasts? And the truth is, I deliver podcasts whenever they come to me. Uh, I know there's a lot of people out there in the world, rightly so, especially at this time, and they have a lot to offer. They have a lot to say. I can only speak what I get when I know I'm getting content for one of these podcasts. In fact, I look back and I thought, my goodness, I've probably done a couple of hundred videos, YouTube videos from several years ago. I did several hundred blogs. I've written six short books. I've been on over 500 podcasts, maybe more than that, where I've been a guest on a radio show, a podcast of others. Um, I don't know how many times I've spoken also. My messages are always the same, the same. They always revolve around living happily or finding your happiness from your insides and working it outwardly. And I thought to myself, you know, I can't fabricate anything if it's not there. And yet other times, I will get content literally out of the blue. I don't want to say it's downloaded to me, but you might say that. It's all of a sudden content and it gets put together and there I am and hence here comes a podcast. Now for those of you who have been following me for a while, you will also know that within this Living Happy Inside Out podcast that I've got, I launched a special series and I had a look back on when was it. It was like September of 2020 that I began the series within this overall podcast. And the series was called The ABCs of Now. And it was an inspired idea I got. I was going to go through the alphabet. Uh, Rather than A through Z, I would start at Z and go all the way back to A with each episode having an alphabet letter and a name or a word or even a phrase beginning with that letter. And it was all about revisiting maybe ideas and thoughts we've all carried with us that were very elementary, that were very driven into our lives, that became somewhat the fabric of our lives and our thought lives and our emotional lives and the way we viewed ourselves in the world. But looking at each one of those things again, almost in reverse, with the idea behind it of undoing a lot of maybe excess baggage that we were carrying that worked fine for us in our past, but we couldn't necessarily take it with us as we and the world we're living in were going through this grand episodic shift in time and in era and in time space. So I remember when I first got it, I thought, oh, this is so great. I've got this inspired idea. Um, 26 episodes and I'll be done maybe in six months. And I noticed that the first couple of episodes I did, they all came to me within a few months and then they started getting spaced out further and further apart. And I thought, oh my gosh, what is this? As it turns out, there's one letter that remains and it is the letter A. And for those of you who have not heard it, or even as a refresher for those who, of you who have, the letter Z came out with the word Zoom. And I was given this picture, I would say, of a roller coaster. You know when you're on a, on a roller coaster and you literally feel like you're going Zoom through this track that you're on? And it's the ride of a lifetime. You know, you go up slowly, you go down, you go sideways. You think at some point you're going to lose your stomach or your lunch. And then all of a sudden it's over because that track or that trip already had a conclusion to it. So I reminded periodically about that being Z because yes, we are going through a major time of shift and change in the world. It's not just here in America. It is literally going on throughout the world. And little did I know back in September of 2020 that what I thought would be, you know, something done in six months, I'm still at it. And I've been waiting for the contents to come for letter A. I know what the word is, 
but contents I really didn't have. However, here is what I have for today. And for those of you who are ready to receive it, accept it, take it for whatever you can hear. For some of you, you may hear and think, oh, you know more, I don't like where you're going with this. You may want to set it aside and maybe find a reason in your future to pull it out and look at it then. You will know if you've been following me for any length of time. I'm never a pontificator that says, oh, it's got to be this way. You've got to think a certain way. In fact, I've had to spend a whole lifetime maybe unthinking things I was taught unthinking or undoing or unraveling a lot of the ideas that were imposed upon me just from society and finding my way, let's say back home from the inside of my life rather than from looking for um, the externals, looking for people to approve of me, looking for external success. I knew it would never come there. So all of what I'm going to tell you today in today's podcast goes back to that same idea, living happy from the inside out. And there's a lot of things that go with that word happy. I really believe that is our home. It is happy. And it's a place of rest where all of us can find refuge, peace. And I just want to say like a place you could put your head down and not feel afraid or not feel anxiety but you're literally like almost floating on a cloud. I know that there's a place like that that we can all find, and that's our equivalent of home. So what is today's word? I'm going to call it this. I'm going to call it the way of love. And I almost want to give you this very simple story, um, and then I'll go into a few more things, that gave me, let's say, the hook for what this recent podcast was going to be. About a year, about a year ago, I was out, my husband was out of town and I had to go and I think I was looking for a new winter coat and I had gone to a local store and what am I looking for but a replacement for my old winter coat and the winter coat had served me very well. I mean, I had traveled with it. I had done so many things. Now I live in Florida, which is a warm weather uh, weather state, but when I would travel, this coat was great. It was black. It was rain resistant. It was warm. It had a hood, which meant if it was raining or whatever, it would protect my head, but I could also remove the hood. It basically was everything I needed. It had deep pockets. Um, so that was my coat, but something must have happened with the zipper. And I thought, well, let me go out. I'll see if I could find a new replacement winter coat. And I want you to think and read between the lines because it's really an analogy to other parts of life. So I go, and I think it might have been like a Nordstrom rack store nearby at the end of the season or at some point, and they had loads of coats. And that's not an easy thing to find down here in Florida. So I go, and I'm looking, and there's some black coats, and I think I put some on, and they were too big. And I'm looking around, and what am I looking for? The same thing I had, the same black coat that did the same functions as my previous black coat, but would be a new black coat. That day, I guess I didn't find one. Maybe I came up with something close, but I wasn't wowed by it. And as I'm there shopping, all of a sudden, I see this other coat, also a winter coat. I would call it more of a ski coat, uh, ski jacket. It goes right to the waist. And it was totally unlike the one I was looking for. It was an emerald green. It did have a, a hood to it. And in the emerald green, which was quite bright, it had stripes, small stripes, of like a royal or a navy blue. And I remember thinking, you know what? I have no time. I, have, I don't have to be anywhere. It's a Saturday. My husband's not home. I could just do whatever I please. And I'm there at Nordstrom's Rack. I put this jacket on. I'm in front of a mirror. I no sooner put it on my body. This, I'm all by myself. And I thought, oh, I love this coat. I love it. Now, it would have been the last thing my natural eyes and natural thinking and let's say trained thinking would have come up with because you know when you travel you want to take one thing with you that serves a multitude of purposes a gr an emerald green short coat um, trimmed in blue was not one of those things but the second 
I put that coat on, zipped it up. I was in front of the mirror and I thought there must be people around me hearing me. I said, I love this coat. And truly I did that coat. I loved it so much. It made me feel so happy. The color, everything about it. It was like so totally out of the so-called comfort zone or out of my norm or my normative way of what I thought I was looking for. I thought, oh my gosh, I just love this coat. So I put it back and I'm busy looking for black coats. Apparently never found one. And I thought to myself, you know, I don't even need this coat. I don't know where I'm going to wear it because I really don't need it in Florida. I'm going to get the coat. Now, I think the coat might have cost $220 or something. I get up to buy the coat. And again, I'm at Nordstrom's Rack, so it's going to be on sale at some point. I get up and the lady said to me, you know, we've got a number of sales going on today. She said, you could, if you get a Nordstrom card and pay it off today, the coat will cost you $36. And I laughed. And I said, you know, I have no idea where I'm going to wear this coat. All I know is I love this coat here in Florida. Now, why am I telling you this story? Aside from the fact that it came to mind the other day with this whole idea of love. That coat was there on a rack. My eyes were not looking for it. I don't know how I glanced upon it and thought, well, I have a moment. Let me try something else. Have you ever had anybody say to you, try it on for size? Just try it on for size. I can remember even saying to my daughter when she was growing up, it was about something completely different. She was homeschooled at the time and there were certain things and activities she was involved in, one of which was dance. She danced everything. And we had a local theater company here, and I think it was for music, singing. And I remember my daughter saying to me one day, oh, mom, I don't think I could sing. I don't want to go to this event. And I said, well, Kaylee, it's just a class. Go once. Tell me what you think. And she was young, maybe 12 or so. And I said, I'll pick you up in an hour when it's over. I pick her up, and she comes out of this place, and she's beaming so happy. And I said, well, what is it? She said, I loved it. I love this class. I want to come back. Well, what Kaylee did not realize is that she had such and has such a beautiful singing voice. She was thought she didn't have a singing voice. She loved to sing. And for the next several years, she was involved with this whole local troupe of high school kids. And they did so many performances. They were, they, she loved it, made friends. But it literally, she came out with the biggest smile. It was an arena or an area or a pursuit or let's say an avenue she would have never thought to pursue. She would have never tried it on for size like I did that green emerald coat. And I want you to think about it. But today I want you to think about it in terms of love. And I'm going to say it even in a different way. And I believe this is the title I'll give this podcast. I'm going to call it the way of love. The way of love. You know, it doesn't take people much to realize that the world in which we live, whether you watch TV, you tune into the news, you're on social media, whatever's going on, people are always offended. They're always struck by something that is, they're agitated by. They're fearful. They're afraid of the next war, the next threatening thing, the next time that somebody's going to trigger them. And what happens is that that becomes something of a familiar comfort zone. My black coat. Well, it's what I do. I wear a black coat when it's cold outside. And you might say to yourself, well, this is what I do. I guard myself from all these crazy things that are going on in the world. And more than that, I guard my heart so that I don't open my heart to love. Because to love involves trust. And secondly, to love or to put oneself out there in love also involves courage. Have you ever been hurt by someone that you gave yourself to? Maybe it was a friend. Maybe it was a coworker. Maybe it was a spouse, boyfriend, girlfriend. You know, it could be somebody you went into business with. It could have been a neighbor that you entrusted that you really showed yourself to and you found that you were hurt by it. And so what do you do? You go into what you feel would be more of a comfort zone, a place to protect yourself. 
and you forget because it's been a while what the way of love is and that's really the central theme of today's podcast have you forgotten what it's like to give love how about even more of this what have what is it like when you go the way of love when you share love when you expose the heart of love that you have within yourself you know some of us have given love away and <laughs> you feel like people are like yeah give me that love so i could just walk all over you and use you like a floor mat and then throw you against a wall somewhere and without even realizing it we can go into these places where we hide and do you realize that in much the same way i could have been wearing a black winter coat for over a decade and forgotten that I love emerald green, for example, that I love bright colors. We can all be living in a gray and colorless world because that emotionally, psychologically, socially, and otherwise, maybe economically, maybe physically, it has become that for us. We might have been people that lived in gray and color, and over the course of time, we went to live in a black and white world and a world that only had grays in between. I want today to encourage you to think about the way of love. And in a sense, to even try it on for size. Maybe some of you have never trusted yourself to love another person or to, let's say, open up your heart to extend yourself to another. And then you might be saying to me today, well, Maura, what does love even look like? Do you know love is a small as sharing your smile with someone. Maybe a perfect stranger. You could be going into a grocery store. It could be making eye contact with someone and letting them know you see them. It could be an acknowledgement, especially of another stranger. Someone maybe who you could see looks like they might be having a bad day or has been overlooked. And you just acknowledge them and their presence. Have you ever been in a situation like that where you did that with another person and you could see they make eye contact back and they're lifted up? Sometimes there are people that are going through the most horrific, horrendous, heart-wrenching, and I would say even alone times. Some people may be suicidal and the little thing, the little acknowledgement you give to them may be the very thing that reminds them that they are loved, that they're lovable. So it doesn't have to be anything major, but when you allow yourself to go in that direction, even that little bit, you may be surprised to find when you give out the love that it's received on the other side. Um, You know, this is another example, and I'm sure I've used it elsewhere and you've heard about it. It could be just a kind gesture. Have you ever been getting coffee somewhere or at the grocery store and you see somebody behind you and you just decide, I'm going to pay their bill? And it could be something small, like a cup of coffee, but it could be something bigger, like, oh, you see the woman coming to, to down for me? Whatever it is, let me know what the bill is so I could pay it when she goes through. Just because you can, sometimes it might be helping people across the street. It can be anything like that. And I'm not telling you what it is. I'm just saying it is a way of opening up who and what we are within our hearts and extending it to another person. There is also something else I've pointed out other times, and this is what love looks like. It may be the pointing out of something good, of something pretty, something praiseworthy that resides in another person. It could be, wow, did anybody ever tell you what a nice smile you have? Or, boy, what a sharp looking outfit. You look excellent in that outfit today. Or mentioning and referencing someone's talent and commenting in a positive way about it. It could be something else you notice in someone's character that just say, wow, you went through that. You, what courage you've got. That is going in the way of love because what you're doing is you are allowing your heart and the light of your heart to see the light and something good and something praiseworthy in another person's life. And when you do that, 
not only are you building up the power of love within yourself, but there's a brightness that shines from you. And you'll notice that there are going to be people that will see it, they'll receive it, they'll acknowledge it, oftentimes thank you for it, and you can know that you just went in the way of love. I want to say a few more things about this. We all came from somewhere, and I'm sure those of you who have followed me, listened to me long enough, whether you heard it directly or if you've discerned it otherwise, I um, have always been a person of faith. More than that, I want to tell you I have faith in love. I want you to think about this. I have faith in love. My very, very first blog post, uh, very first, even before I knew I was going to have a blog, I had to get up out of bed one night and write it. And of all things, I wrote this story called Tombstones. It was a little reflection. And you would think, Tombstones? Why would you write about tombstones? But it had to do about how will you be remembered? And I happened to be going through an experience in life, maybe where someone was judging me, misjudging me, and... And I remember just being in a, on my bicycle and I ended up riding through a cemetery, sat down, and I must have been taking this to God and saying, you know, what do I do about this situation? And while I was there, I happened to notice all of these tombstones that had a person's name, the date of their birth, the date of their death, and usually there's a place for like three or four words. And most of them would say, never to be forgotten. Mother, grandmother, wife and mother, never to be forgotten. And I knew full well, after a couple of generations, these people are well forgotten. So my, the blog that I wrote was actually kind of uh, tongue in cheek. It was a little bit, it was clever and it was funny. But I remember while I was in that cemetery that day, I remember thinking, you know what? One day there may be a tombstone with my name on it. And I thought, how do I, at the end of my life, want to be remembered? And as I asked myself the question, in that instant, the answer came to mind. And the answer was, she loved. I want to be remembered, if at all, as someone who loved. And the thought that came right behind it was this. I didn't even care if people remembered my name, Maura Sweeney, or didn't remember my name, What I wanted to know, or what I truly did care about, my life, my being, the time I spent here on planet Earth, is that while I was here, the people whose lives I touched, and it could be family, neighbors, people I worked with, people I went to school with, strangers, I just wanted to leave behind the feeling, the aroma, the presence the sense, the heart frequency, if you want to call it that, of love. And that to me would be my joy after leaving planet Earth. So when I tell you about try it on for size, go consider going and walking in the way of love. And I said to you at the very beginning of this episode, some of you may think, I don't like what you're telling me because I've got a real issue with so-and-so, or you don't know what so-and-so did to me, which is why today may not be your day. But file this away because I want you to know that there may come a day where it is your day to listen to it anew. Everybody has difficult times in life. I could go back to my past and think, whoa, I had people in grammar school, high school, college, work, um, family, friends, church. I mean, I could go anywhere and tell you I've had people that decided they didn't like me. They were offended by me. They would look for ways to dislike me. They would look for ways, some of them, to humiliate me on purpose. I don't know why. They're They're just people like that in this world. And for people who might be listening today and you may be going through a hard time, I realize that sometimes when we go through hard times, when we've extended our heart and others have kind of taken it and trampled it underfoot, that we grieve. There are other times we might want to, again, lick our wounds and we're like, well, you don't know what so-and-so did to me. But I'll tell you this. 
If you'd consider going the way of love and you let these offenses go and you just choose instead to say, you know what? There may be some people that have a problem with me. Maybe there's some people that did things I didn't like, but I'm going to choose love anyway. There is such a freeing sense to it. There is such peace, oh my gosh, such a peace that goes along with it, that where you go, where you place your feet, when you look at people, when you speak with people, when you converse, there's a frequency, there's an energy. I want to tell you this, there's even like a force field that's around you. You live in it, but the better thing is, you get to beam it out and share it with other people. And I'm going to say this further. I believe in love because I know that our origin came from love. You know, I would say I have a father in heaven that I've given him that name. He's my father God. But other people may say, well, it's, you know, it's the spirit, it's uh, the... um, What's another thing? The prime creator. Other people will say it's the universe. Others might say it's the, um, the grand intelligence. Whatever it is, it all started with oneness. And it all started from oneness of love. And when love decided to replicate itself and to look upon itself, it was all done in such a sense of rejoicing and gladness. And look at that, it's another me. It's another like me. It was all love. And how it is over the course of time and space and place and the arena that we live in in a 3D type universe in bodies, there's a lot of different things people go through where they tend to feel offended, they are offended, they project offenses, they hurt one another, and it goes on through generations. But the beginning of it all was love. The beginning of it all was oneness. I want you to consider, and I know that love takes on a lot of different, I would say impressions, a lot of different expressions. You know, sometimes love stands up to someone and says, I believe better for you, and I'm not going to accept what you're doing. Sometimes love has to step out of the picture a little bit. Sometimes love needs to confront. Sometimes love, maybe a parent for their child, has to pull other people out of the way in order to protect their child. Sometimes love has to let a child, a grown child who keeps going in the wrong direction, go and fall until that child finds their way back. Love has a lot of expressions, but love is a frequency, it's a unity, it's a place of peace, and it's a place that ultimately we're all going to return to. So when I say Try it on for size. Try on the way of love. I'm going to tell you that for each one of us, we have to learn it by experimenting with it, by going from within and thinking, okay, so what's going on here? How else can I re-see this? How else can I deal with this situation? How else can I see this from a higher perspective where there's something redeeming, where there's something good that's going to come out of it? What good thing can I hope for? And how can I walk in that way? And I want to leave you with that because I'm going to share this. In the ABCs of now that started with C and is going to deal with the shift, the letter A is alpha. Do you know that alpha means new beginnings? I, was, I always knew that A, not always, but I did know the letter A in this ABCs of now series was going to be alpha. And anybody who's ever looked up alpha, heard about alpha, knows that it does mean new beginnings. You know, this is coming full circle because so many of us look at our world, we look at our leaders, we look at our institution, Z. We look at so many things, our experts, 
the people in the know, the important people, maybe the moneyed people. And we always say, I'm waiting for them to fix the world. I'm waiting for this to happen so that we can have a new world or let's say a better world or they're going to fix it. I want to challenge you to be thinking about something there is a new world coming because the old world has very rapidly been deteriorating. And if we haven't seen it all, we will soon see the rest of it kind of devolve. But I want you to know, because you came from a place of unity, because you came from a place of love, you personally, not the big wheel, not the big person, not the institution you've relied upon, but you, you, you can signal not only to yourself, but also to other people that you are the beginning of the new beginning. And as you walk in that oneness of love, where you see others like yourself, where you point out some of the good things that you see, where you lift up and encourage and literally share your heart and other good things with other people, Your force field of light from within your heart gets picked up by others. And in the same way, they might have been living in a black coat, black winter coat, protecting themselves. They never forgot the love that they were conceived in, the love that they came from, which is that love of oneness, which is really creation. You can be the way of love. And as you walk in it, You become the light of love that helps others remember that is their new beginning because it was their origin. And as you do it, you have finished, in a sense, the ABCs of now by going backward right to the beginning, to where you start with a new beginning. And if I could finish it off by saying one thing, when I got the expression, you're going to do this series more called the ABCs of now... And you're going to do it in reverse. What happens when you reverse the word now, N-O-W? Do you know what you get? You get the word one. One, as if not only am I one, that's, that's O-N-E, but do you know what it means to win or to have won? It means you've overcome the darkness. You've overcome the turmoil. You've overcome the sorrow. You've overcome the unforgiveness or the bitterness or let's say the grief and the grieving. And your light is now allowed to shine from your heart and out to others. And it becomes the beginning of a brand new day for you and for everyone that you come in contact with, even as you choose to walk and to abide in the way of love. So I don't know the next time I'm going to speak with everybody again, but I hope that today, whenever or whenever it is that you happen to listen to this podcast, it will arrive at a time when your heart is ready to hear it. And more than that, when you are ready to embrace it and to walk anew, which is really like walking in the old ways to start afresh in the way of love and plan to bring a lot of people with you. So I want to say to everyone who's listening, may you be blessed and may you be a blessing everywhere you are from this day forward. Take care. This has been Maura with More For You.